you know, there have been public warnings based on a variety of considerations that I should not visit the Far East at this time. With these, I did not agree. However, they moved me to rethink and to re-examine my individual responsibility within the American mission of free world leadership. In that process, I decided neither to postpone nor to cancel my trip to the Far East. With those words, the president begins his fateful trip to the Far East. His family, executive and personal, and a nonpartisan nation applaud his determination not to be deterred from his purpose by unpleasant incidents and sporadic turmoil inspired by misled or hostile agents. Japanese riots caused concern for the president. Earlier, crowds had gathered at Tokyo's Haneda Airport, where Mr. Eisenhower's press secretary, James C. Haggerty, was flying in from Okinawa to arrange details for the president's visit. The mobs of Japanese leftists far outnumbered those who would make Mr. Haggerty welcome. Estimated at 10,000, they were out to give him a foretaste of the reception they planned for the president. In the car with Mr. Haggerty were the U.S. ambassador and the presidential appointment secretary. A mile from the airport, the demonstrators blocked the car's path and held it there for 80 vilifying, stone-throwing minutes. Calmly, Jim Haggerty waited out the ordeal until a marine helicopter summoned by portable radio came to the rescue, showing the demonstrators an example of Yankee courage. Police hurried the Americans to the copter, and the frustrated mob watched it fly them out, headed for the U.S. Embassy. There were also demonstrations outside the embassy, even as Japan was expressing regrets for the actions of the left-wing minority. Japanese newspapers called it a national shame. Elaborate precautions were planned to forestall such an attack on President Eisenhower. And here is the scene of greeting at Anchorage, Alaska, where the chief executive launches his 23,000-mile Far East journey. Perhaps forgetting for the moment the tenseness and drama of his trip, he inspects an Alaskan wildlife exhibit in a log cabin museum. The displays of the 49th state capture the president's interest. Daughter-in-law Barbara Eisenhower, accompanying the president with his son John, likewise shows interest. On the sidewalk outside, there's a native Eskimo dance to be watched by the president. A brief bit of pleasantry amid the serious overtones of a significant presidential journey. 